Welcome and thank you for attending today's webinar, Using Machine Learning to Optimize Semiconductor Test. I'm pleased to introduce today's speaker, Gerard John. Gerard serves as Senior Director, FCBGA at Amcor Technology Incorporated, managing the FCBGA product portfolio for Amcor customers. He is an advanced test expert with 30 years experience in semiconductor, including areas of MEMS, 2.5D, WLFO, HDFO, fine pitch probe, and optical devices. Today, Gerard will discuss machine learning in the field of engineering under the artificial intelligence umbrella based on the idea that systems can learn from data, identify patterns, and make decisions with minimal human intervention. He will explore skepticism within the test community and share an example of an open shorts test to shed light on optimizing tests using machine learning. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome Gerard John, Senior Director, FCBGA at Amcor Technology Incorporated. Hello, everyone. My name is Gerard, and today I'll be presenting the concept of using machine learning to optimize a semiconductor test. The agenda for today is as follows. I will start this presentation with an overview of machine learning. Then, I'll give you the background to machine learning and test, followed by an introduction to open shorts testing, after which we shall look at the results of data analysis using machine learning techniques. With that knowledge, we'll look at how we can use machine learning to optimize semiconductor test. Then we discuss the next steps and end with a conclusion. So what is machine learning? According to Tom Mitchell, Machine learning is a computer program which is set to learn from experience E with respect to some task T and some performance measure P. T's performance, as measured by P, improves with experience E. Sounds pretty complicated, right? So what is he really trying to say? If you have a computer program that needs to make predictions, the accuracy of these predictions depends on the amount of data the program has access to. Or in other words, more data makes better predictions. Machine learning can be classified into two categories, namely supervised learning and unsupervised learning. In supervised learning, each data point is labeled and therefore the machine learns by analyzing data and checking the labels. Based on labels, it learns to classify the data in, in two binary states. Supervised learning uses classification or regression methods to analyze data. In the unsupervised learning, the machine uses algorithms to group data into clusters. The common algorithms used for supervised and unsupervised learning are listed on the right-hand side of the slide. Even though machine learning is used in many everyday applications, it has continued to be looked at with skepticism in the field of test engineering. And for good reason. Test engineering has been around for 30 plus years and never was there a need for machine learning. Therefore, when talking about machine learning and test, it is common to be asked questions such as, are big data companies trying to shoehorn their products into semiconductor test? Do you really believe that machine learning can improve test? If we use machine learning and test, what will be the impact of product quality? I have never studied machine learning, so how will I teach a machine? Last but not the least, will I still have a job? Using the example of open shots testing, I will try to debunk the myth that ML has no place in semiconductor test. What is open shots testing? When and why is it done? Open shots testing is commonly known as OS test. This is usually the first test executed in a production test suite. This test verifies the die to external BGA connectivity. How is this done? Most IO pins have ESD protection diodes that are connected to VDD and VSS. We verify connectivity by applying a voltage on the BGA, which forward biases the, the diode. We then measure the voltage across the diode. If this measured voltage is within an acceptable range, 
usually greater than 0.2 volts and less than 1 volt, the BG is declared as a pass, meaning it is connected to the die. Apart from BGA to die connectivity, this test also provides an indication of the connectivity of the test board to the device under test. The device under test, or the DUT. For this talk, I randomly chose a device. The device has a 20 by 20 BGA array, therefore loosely called a 400 pin device. The BGA pins are referenced by an alphabet representing the row and a number representing the column. For example, the first pin on the top right corner is A1. The pin to its right is A2. The DUT map gives a bird's eye view of the ball layout of the device. The pin map is color coded. Pins are grouped by the functionality and given a particular color. There are no particular standards for colors and are chosen by the product engineer. In this device, the colors chosen were greens, gray, blues, and purples. The grays represent the power and ground pins. The greens, the blues, and the purples represent the I.O. or input-output pins. Test method, I.O. pins. Let's take the example of pin A2, which is an I.O. pin. The OS test will verify through measurements the connectivity of the spin to both VDD and VSS. This is done by two separate tests. The first forces 100 microamps to the pin being tested to verify connectivity to VDD. The second test sinks 100 microamps to verify connectivity to the VSS pin. We repeat this test for each and every I.O. pin. The device under test in this example has 400 pins, of which approximately 300 pins are I.O. Therefore, we obtain 600 measurements, or call them data points, or experience E, as Tom Mitchell would call them. And this is just for the I.O. pins. Power and ground. In this section, we discuss power and ground connectivity. The number of power pins and ground pins are typically split 50-50. It is common to see multiple power domains in a device. However, almost always only a single ground plane. This particular device has five independent power domains. All BGAs within the same power domain are verified to be connected to each other. Similarly, all ground pins are verified that they are connected to each other. Test method, power and ground. Two verifications are performed in the power and ground test. First, we verify that all power domain BGAs and ground BGAs are connected to the die. Next, we verify that there are no shorts between any of the power domains and ground. Since there are no EST diodes in the power and ground planes, this test measures for resistance. In this example, the power and ground OS tests provide us with another 100 measurements. In total, for one device, the OS test provides us with 700 measurements, 600 for the I.O. and 100 from the power and ground plane. For a device this size, the typical production quantity would be approximately 100k units per week. That gives us a total of 70 million data points per week. It's a lot of data to analyze and best suited for a machine to do. Classification, pass-fail training using machine learning. Using ML supervised learning technique and the IOPIN measurement data, the device will be classified as a fail if the measured value is below 0.2 volts, indicating a short circuit or if the measured value is greater than 1.5 volt, the device will again be classified as a fail, indicating an open circuit. All measurements that fall between these two limits will be considered a pass. So the classification algorithm in machine learning analyzes the data and classifies the device as either a pass or a fail. Using ML's clustering technique to detect correlation. In these graphs, the x-axis represents the device count. Each colored line represents a different test, and each dot represents a device measurement. 
In this case, approximately 30,000 devices were tested. Right around device 2500, we see a commonality across two independent tests. This pattern is seen repeating in the purple, green, and blue boxes. It would have been almost impossible to observe these patterns by looking at the raw test data. And therefore, using machine learning's clustering techniques could help us detect correlation between tests. By overlaying the two graphs, it's a lot easier to observe these patterns rather than when they were side by side. Such comparisons are easily achieved using software programs. This gives us an example of how machine learning can detect patterns much easier than humans. Using the unsupervised learning technique, the machine learning program can analyze the data and create a hypothesis when the hypothesis is a prediction. It can validate this hypothesis by using more data and can compute its prediction accuracy or error function. Using the error function, it can further tweak the hypothesis to improve its prediction accuracy and lower the error. Using clustering to optimize test. As you might have noticed in the previous slides, there was a lot going on, not just test correlation, but some other interesting groupings. In this slide, I have zoomed into the groupings. Here, we do not see outright fails, but we do see clusters of higher than average voltage measurements. What does this indicate? Since the current flowing through the circuit is fixed, by applying Ohm's law, we can conclude that the resistance of the electrical path is increasing. Let's dig into this a little deeper. The increase in resistance points to a degradation in electrical contact between the device under test and the test socket, most likely due to a physical presence of foreign materials on the pogo pins preventing good electrical contact. We do not see the device fail in this test. However, not cleaning the socket could impact more sensitive tests that follow and can increase rejects due to false fails eventually impacting yield. What corrective action can machine learning provide? If the machine learning algorithm sees this type of signature, it can then alert the operator to clean the test socket. Optimizing semiconductor test. What are the key areas to focus on when optimizing semiconductor test? The three areas we focus on are cost, yield, and quality not necessarily in that order, but those are the three that we would like to focus on. Optimizing for any two of the three are possible with some effort. Optimizing for three out of three variables is mission impossible. By using However, machine learning, by using two machine learning, out of the three is definitely two out a yes, three is definitely and three yes. out of three is definitely possible, while three out of three is also a possibility. Let's look at ways to reduce the cost of test, improve yield, and improve quality. Reducing the cost of test. How do we do that? By having ML look at test data, we can record the number of interruptions that needed manual intervention and how often these interruptions occurred. With this information, we can optimize the man-to-machine ratio and come up with methods to reduce manual intervention. ML can also predict maintenance and calibration cycles. Basically, predict failures before they occur. Using ML, we can detect when a socket needs cleaning. We can also detect drifts in te tester measurements and recommend tester calibrations. Using ML, we can implement adaptive test. What is adaptive test? Adaptive test is one which changes the test sequence and runs tests that are most likely to fail earlier in the test sequence helping us to catch fails early in a test suite. Let's take the example of a complex device that needs an expensive tester to test its functionality. The cost of test is a function of the tester complexity and the duration of time the device takes to be tested. If we were to assume that the test time for a device to be fully tested is 15 seconds, rather than wait 15 seconds to find out if the device passes or fails, it would be better to run tests which ML predicts 
are most likely to fail early in the test sequence. Thereby, we save a lot of time and bring in a new device if a device failed early. ML to improve yield. How do we do that? As we saw in earlier slides, we can improve yield by improving the test setup quality. That is, the quality of the tester, the load board, the test socket, by performing ML suggested maintenance cycles. We can also improve yield by using adaptive test and down binning. Let's say we're testing a processor with 32 cores. If all 32 cores were to work, ML would select the bin one test flow. If less than 32 but greater than 27 cores were functional, ML would call the bin two test flow. If less than 27 but greater than 23 cores were functional, ML would call the bin three test flow. So what are we doing here? ML is using adaptive test to downbin parts and recover parts which would have otherwise been scrapped. ML to improve quality. How do we do that? We can use part average testing to catch the walking wounded. We can use shift left testing, that is test early, test hard. We can implement unit level traceability with 2D barcodes. What does unit level traceability track? Well, it tracks the wafer lot number, the wafer number, the die location, the die XY, the substrate ID, material information such as underfill batch, the TIM batch, the lid attach batch. It can also track the tester information such as tester ID, prober ID, handler ID, site ID. Using all this information, ML can create a big picture and highlight areas that needs attention to improve quality. The next steps. The introduction of machine learning to test is best done by tester companies. The implementation of ML would require integration with handler and probo vendors too. Let's address the test engineer's concerns that we brought up at the start of this presentation. ML is not a conspiracy. As long as there's data in test, ML can help. Training the machine. The machine learning algorithms will come with general test knowledge and will learn product specifics from product and test engineers. The process will be much like getting an intern to the test flow. They come with some knowledge and have some specialized programming skills, but they learn the ropes from good experienced test engineers. Will I still have a job? Yes. Good test engineers are always essential. As I always say, the product quality is only as good as a test engineer. Here's a link to prior art where we see collaboration from three key players, the OSAT, the test vendor, and academia. This is the only way we can improve machine learning and test. Conclusion. Using the example of open shorts testing, we have seen how machine learning algorithms help optimize test cost, improve quality, and improve yield. Therefore, its introduction brings a paradigm shift to test engineering. Machine learning helps test by leveraging tools which already exist and handles the mundane task of data analysis. It reduces the cost of test, predicts failures before they occur, overall improves quality and yield. Thank you for your attention. Should you have any further questions, please feel free to email me at gerard.john at amcor, that's A-M-K-O-R dot com. Thank you.